So this one kind of walks you through doing it. So first off, it asks you to find f of zero and f dash four. Okay. Right, so um, find f of zero and f dash of zero. So f of zero is you can just substitute zero into here, so e to the minus zero sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero. Zero. Then f dash x, remember you need to use the product rule to differentiate this. So differentiate e to the minus x gives you minus e to the minus x sine x. And then plus differentiating sine x gives you cos x. And times it by e to the minus x. Substitute zero into that. Gives you minus e to the zero sine zero, which is zero. And then plus e to the zero cos zero, which is one. E to the zero is one, f dash zero. Then it asks you to show that if you differentiate it twice, you get an expression related to uh, the previous two. So f dash x and f of x. Let's do the second derivative. So first off, differentiating e to the minus x sine x, you've done that already. You could do it again, but you've done that already. So this will be minus the result that you just got. And then um, you need to uh, also differentiate e to the x cos x, e to the minus x cos x, sorry. So you get minus e to the minus x cos x, uh, minus e to the minus x sine x if you use the product rule on that. Expanding this out and collecting it up, um, so you get plus e to the minus x sine x minus e to the minus x sine x, which cancels out, and you just get minus 2 e to the minus x cos x. That's what you should get for your second derivative. Writing this in terms of the previous derivatives, so in the previous one, we've got e to the minus x cos x. Here we've got minus 2 lots of that. So to write it in terms of the previous derivative, I need minus two also times this bit here. So minus two times that will make positive two e to the minus x sine x. Which is minus two f dash x. I can't just randomly add stuff in. So I've got to subtract it as well. And this bit here, this is minus 2 f of x. Like they asked for. What you could have done is gone from there and subbed the stuff in and showed that you got minus 3 for the minus x. Just leave it. Chill, now, guys, can I be listening, please? For um, the third derivative, it doesn't actually need you to differentiate all the e to the next cos and stuff. What you can do is take this expression and differentiate that. If I differentiate f double dashed, I get f triple dashed. If I differentiate f dashed, I get f double dashed. And if I differentiate f, F dash, I just added a dash onto all of this. Um, it's a bit unclear as to what it wants. It says find a similar expression. Um, but um, I'm going to also replace this F double dashed here with the expression in the question. So get minus 2 times minus 2 F dashed X minus 2 F X. Minus 2 F dashed X and expand this out and tidy it up. So this minus 2 times minus 2 gives you 4f dashed, minus 2 gives you 2f dashed x. And then you've got plus 4, that should be. Plus 4f x. Okay. Definitely not an obvious thing to do. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Now working out um, f triple dash to zero, I forgot to find f double dash to zero as well. 
But if triple dash of zero, I can just substitute in zero into this. Remember, f of zero is zero, f of dash of zero is one. This just gives you two. And working out uh, f double dash of zero that I forgot to do earlier. Just subbing zero into this expression. f of zero is zero, f dash zero is one. That gives you minus. It then says find the McLaurin series for f of x up and include into the term in x cubed. So there, that's where you're using the formula. So f of x is f of zero, which is zero, plus f dash to zero times x. That's one times x. Plus f double dash to zero, which you got to be minus two over two factorial x squared. And then plus f triple dash of zero over three factorial x cubed. So you can look the formula up, it's in your formula sheet. And so simplifying that gives us x minus x squared uh, plus a third x. Let me go through the next one then. Thank you. Still being um, all right. So first one, a bit hyperbolic stuff. They quite often do mix up um, topics with this authoritative stuff. So I ask you to show that d by dx of r shine x is that. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So we're going to start off with y equals r shine x. I'm going to do shine to both sides and write it as x equals shine y. I'm going to do dx by dy, or you could do it implicitly, it's fine. <coughs> the dx by dy is cos y, flip it to get dy by dx. Then at this stage, I'm using an identity. I'm going to use the cos squared y minus shine squared y equals 1. Rearrange for cos y. So add the shine squared and square root it. Just hit the positive one. Stick that in. So do have x is one over root one plus shine squared y. And then finally remember shine y is x to start. Which is what they ask. <coughs> It asks you to find the first two non zero terms of the series expansion of R shine X. Okay, so first off, um, we've got F of X is R shine X. If you stick x and zero into that, you will get zero. So this is the zero example. F dash to zero then, using what it says in the question, that's one over root one plus zero squared, which gives us one. We're going to need the second derivative of this to get another non-zero term. So to differentiate one over root one plus x squared, I'm going to write it as brackets or minus a half, and then use the chain rule on this. Differentiate the inside gives you two x. Differentiate the outside, you times by the power and minus one for the power. Gives you this expression here. Um, so you get minus x one plus x squared 
minus zero two, and the bad news is. If you sub in zero, you get zero. So we've got to differentiate it again to get a non zero term. Throw it x. So we're going to use the product rule this time and the chain rule. So differentiating minus x goes to minus one times by the other function. So differentiate the first, multiply by the second. Plus differentiating the second function, we've got to use the chain rule again to differentiate this bracket. So differentiate the inside, differentiate the outside. Minus one from the power. And don't forget, we've also got to times it by that minus x. Um, I'm not even going to bother actually evaluating, like um, simplifying that, because I'm sticking x to zero. Don't need to. Let's stick zero in. All of this second term ends up being zero, and so you just get um, minus one. It's a lot of effort to get That gives us our two non-zero terms. So summing this into the formula for um, the Maclaurin series. So you get f of zero, which was zero. Plus f dashed of zero, which we got is one times x. Plus f double dash of zero over two factorial x squared, which is zero. Plus f triple dash of zero, which you get minus one over three factorial x cubed. The first two non zero terms of our friend x are that. Okay. It then gives you this horrible looking thing. So the general form of your series expansion is that series there, which is generally not very nice, and you would never be expected to work anything like that out yourself. All it says though is find in simplest terms the coefficient of x to the five. All you've got to do in here is substitute in the appropriate n value to get x to the five. So this one, you want two and plus one equal in five, so you sub in n equal two. If I substitute n is two um, into all of the stuff that's not x, basically, then so minus one squared. Uh, two times two factorial, so that's four factorial. Two to the two n, so that's two to the four. And then that's over two factorial squared. Uh, that's x to the five, I'll pop it in. And then you've got um, two n plus one on the bottom there is five. Thank you. Three out of 40 x to the five. This is the coefficient machine. So at the moment now we've got f of x is what we had before. X minus six x cubed plus three over 40 x to the 5. It wants us to use this to um, find an approximate value for our shine 0 0.5. Let's think it 0 0.5. What? Uh, not quite. I'm asked Charlie the entire time. Uh, uh, so Morning. I understand what you're saying, but I literally just don't please stand for nothing. I actually just don't want to be able to the calculator. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So work out actually what our shine not but five is. The option hyperbolic, there's inverse shine here. You're not quite far blah blah blah. So, since Jera for this one, it's going to be the difference between these two divided by what it actually is. Okay. Um, so, do the bigger one, take away the smaller one. Actual one. And in your calculator, be as exact as you can. So I'm going to um, delete this one. And then I'm going to do uh, actual, um, uh, sorry, this one. So I'm going to do ANS, that's the 0 0.4815, minus inverse shine of 0 0.5. So option F6, hyperbolic inverse shine. And then over inverse shine 0.5. Yes. Yeah, but not Okay, so um, this one, first up says using the derivatives um, inverse sign is given in the list of formulae, um, find the y by the x. Uh, this is basically what we're going to do. So we've been looking at integrating to give arc sign. You know that you differentiate arc sign, it gives you. Um, oops, let's try that again. You differentiate arc sign or sine to the minus one. It gives you um, one over. Okay, so that's in the formula sheet. Differentiating y then, so do y by dx. So if y is uh, inverse sine 2x. Uh, you differentiate inverse sine, which gives you this thing, but you also have to times by the 2, the chain rule. You've got 2 on the top, and instead of x, I've got 2x in there, so this will be root 1 minus 2x. But which obviously will write as root 1 minus 4x. Okay, so just find the table for that. Yeah. Then it says show this thing here. It doesn't tell you how to show that, but hopefully you're looking at that and thinking, right, in the second derivative in there, I'm going to differentiate again. Okay. I'm going to differentiate this expression that we've got here from part. To be able to differentiate this, I'm going to write it as. 2 times 1 minus 4x minus a half. And differentiating again, it's d squared over d x squared. So I need to differentiate the inside. The differentiating the inside gives you minus 8x. So you've got 10 by 2 from the front. And then differentiate the outside. Times by the power of minus 1 from the power. Tidy all the stuff up, so there's the minus and the minus that cancel. There's a two and the um, half that cancel. So gives you eight, one minus four, minus three. Minus three over two. We need to make this look like what they asked for. Um, so there's a four x dy by dx in the, I've lost an x on now, that should be an eight x. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and engineer a, a way to get dy by dx in there, which is 2 times 1 minus um, 4x squared to the minus half. So let's write that in there. So we've got the 2 1 minus 4x squared minus half. <coughs> to keep this the same, I've got 2 there, so I need to times it by 4x to make it 8x. 
And to keep this the same, I need a 1 minus a bar x squared. So the minus 1, it's about half those powers, I'll get that minus 2. The reason I've done that is because this thing here is dy by dx. And just to get what I wanted, I can times through by 1 minus 4x squared. Just 1 minus 4x squared, sorry, on both sides. 1 minus 4x squared. d squared y by dx squared. And then on the right hand side, I've got 4x dy by dx squared. Yeah, so I just fiddled it about to get dy by dx in there and looked at what else I've got left, which has ended up being what they want. Then it says, hence, show this thing here. So even if you couldn't show part three, you could still have a go at part three. And what you notice about part three is that it's got a third derivative in there, a q dy by dx squared. Um, so I'm just going to differentiate this expression that I've got up here and see what we guess. Okay. So differentiating this expression from part two, differentiating the left hand side, I need to use the product rule because it's two things multiplied to twelve. So if I differentiate the first thing, I get minus eight dx times by the second. Differentiating the first thing, you see minus eight x. Uh, differentiate um, by the second. Then I differentiate the second thing. So plus d cubed y by dx cubed times by the first, which is 1 minus 4 x squared. So that's using the product rule on the left hand side. I've also got to use the product rule on the right hand side. So differentiating the first gives you 4 times by the second, 4 dy by dx. Plus differentiate the second, which is d squared by dx squared, multiplied by the first, which you have 4 and we're basically there. I'm just going to take everything over to the left hand side now. Uh, um, on the left hand side, I've got 1 minus 4x squared d cubed y by dx cubed. Minus in this 4x d squared y by dx squared, and cross it gives me another minus 12x d squared y by dx squared. And minus in this 4 dy by dx cross. That we can be around, which is what they asked for. Now that it's got us to do all of those things, it wants us to find the Maclaurin series for sine to the minus one of two x. Up to the next step, so we need to evaluate these derivatives at zero. So let's start off with f of zero. So in x is zero into sine to the minus one of two x. Inverse sine of zero is just zero. f dash of zero, so subbing that into dy by dx, something zero into that, we get two over root one minus zero. Two. And then using the differential equations that we've built up, we can sub these values in when we're evaluating them at zero. So our third so second derivative, f of double dash of zero, d squared r by dx squared. If we sub zero into this final result that we've got down here, okay. so subbing zero in, actually the right hand side is just zero. It doesn't matter what do our dx is, although do our dx is two at zero. Subbing zero to the left hand side, that just gives you one. So that just gives you that d squared over d x squared is zero. Okay, I got it with that. Finally, your third derivative. On the one that we just showed, the links in the question. So sticking x is zero into this. Uh, so this bit is zero if you put in x is zero. All of this bit is zero because it's times by zero. Dy by dx is two. From what we worked out before. Uh, so sticking all the same gives you your third derivative. 
Uh, minus eight equals zero. So the third derivative is equal to eight. You can stick all that into your formula form of Thurin series now. So f of x equals f zero, which is zero, plus f dash to zero x. Two x plus f double dash to zero over two factorial x squared plus f triple dash to zero over three factorial x cubed, which gives us two x or over three. Quite often in exam questions, they might get you to differentiate it two or three times. Come up with equations like this is similar to the first example in this pack as well, where they're going to come up with relationships between the derivatives and got to kind of work 